back. What's going on? You cannot say what's wrong or right. You cannot say what's wrong. It's not hard to fool me. Shout out to the CIA. I'm addicted to the good life. Yeah. One love, FBI. How are we doing tonight? It's time to get into this. In the chat room. Age, city, gender, let's get, come on. Last show of the week, last show in Manhattan. I know it's gonna be sad. Really. New York City, you're gonna miss me. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, you feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies. Your godfather is still in Manhattan. Yeah, I'm still here. Friday, headed back Sunday. The lights will be back on Monday. The whole show. But you got me one more day, one more evening. And tonight, ladies, we are going to discuss another important topic. Um, oh yeah, no suit, no suit. The temperature dropped outside. It's been raining all day. So I just decided to say, let's just go ahead and chill out on Friday night. Friday night, you know, normally I put on my tuxedo or my velvet jacket or something like that. Friday nights, we just kind of tune it down, pour a little something and we just talk, you know, if I wanted to get super bougie on y'all, I'd be coming to you from like a, in front of a roaring fireplace on a snow-covered mountain, just doing that shit like that. Because, hey, I'm bougie like that, so what's up? So, before we get into it, I need everybody to make sure you hit that like button. Hit the like button and hit the dislike button. I don't care. I know you like it or else you wouldn't be here. You like it. You like it. You know you like it, girl. Stop playing like you don't like it. Go ahead. You know, hit the like button. Cause you know you like it when I hit your button. Come on, give me what, give me. Come on, come on, come hither, baby girl. Come hither, come hither. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what that move is. But anywho, twelve hundred people in here. We don't even have 500, 400 likes. I got it. Y'all got excited. Y'all didn't know if I was coming on tonight because you didn't see the announcement ahead of time. We are here. Let's do it. Last night we talked about ladies. Don't make high value men wait. And that's the problem. Last night, I said, ladies, how long should you make a man, the kind and caliber of man you're talking about, how long should you make him wait? 
And many of you were just confused as French toast. Why? Because you're still trying to make these fear-based arguments that don't come into effect when you're dealing with a man of, 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 of means, a man who's productive, competitive, and successful. And what really showed last night is many of you ladies aren't ready for the men you say you are. When I asked, what should you look for in a man? What do you want? All I heard was cricket ass quiet from a bunch of grown damn women. What do you want for a man? He needs to be black. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. At 30 plus years old, the, all the thought you've put into what do I need to do to land my man is he needs to be black. See, what I think is being shown is something that we've been talking about for the longest. That Many of you ladies have your list, you have your fantasy, but you have no idea what a man, what those men, the kind of men that you want, what they want, nor how to go about getting them. Last night I asked a simple question. Uh, you shouldn't be going out on a date with anybody. You shouldn't be going out on a second date with anybody you're not sexually attracted to. Do not accept a date of a man you would not sleep with off the top you get three dates first date to see whether or not i want to sleep with you or I, not let me pack it up first date is to see whether or not i want to talk to you after i sleep with you i only go out with a woman that i do want to sleep with the second date is to see whether or not i want to talk to you afterwards the third date formality you don't like the pro? Go back and watch the program again. Like two of the callers that sick that called in. Like what you got? Like Doc called in and said last night. Uh, in three weeks, I was with my husband. Because if a man is at a certain caliber, he's already got the productive, competitive, successful thing. He's already attractive and everything else. What's the holdup? And many of you ladies are when you got to admit. Most of your decisions are based in fear. See, many of you know how to lose, but you don't know how to win. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. If you got Henry, you got Keith Henry, you got Blake Henry over here, Bradley, Amer, Keith, and Enrique. You got a Henry over here, white collar, blue collar, hit squad. Then you got every other kind of man over here. Look, you may even have a Greg on Aaron. That's a great regular guy or an above average guy. But I like to stick to my Henrys and my above average guys because those are my clients. And to all you crybaby guys that keep asking, well, what about the guys that make less than $60,000? No offense, bro, but I'm an image consultant. You're not my client. I speak to men that are my clients. I'm not trying to talk to for 100% of men. So stop asking. But when a man meets the marks, what's the hold up, ladies? And last night, many of you proved that you don't know how to handle success. You don't know how to win. You're too versed at losing. You've lost so long, you're a loser. I said it two shows ago. You can't move 50-50, ladies, and expect a 100% man. And tonight, we're going to get into it. But before we do this, shout out to hey. I can't come through. Uh oh. Let me see what Ike say. Shout out to brother Ike. I'll be out there in your way very shortly. Very shortly. Shout out to U.S. Michael Horrell. Ladies, tonight I got to ask the question again. The presumption is the man is productive, competitive, successful. Okay? He's, he's done everything he needs. He's done and he has done and is doing the things that he needs to do in the real world. He asked you out on a date. He's not asking you out to, you know, a cheese sandwich and a picnic. Because I don't want to go on a cheese sandwich and a picnic. He's asking you out on a date. Don't go out with him if you're not sexually attracted to him. And you damn sure don't follow up on a second date if you don't plan on having sex with him immediately, immediately. 
as uh, Agent Smith would say. But as we continue to move on, ladies, a man like that has had to go out and separate himself from his competition. He has had to go out and, you know, move up the organizational chart at work. He has had to make the grades. He has had to he has had to compete and win. OK. And men like that are winners and they expect prizes. Now, some women are like, well, there are not a lot of guys like that. Uh, there are far more of those guys than there are available black women. I'm just going to put it right there. There are far more of those guys than women to fit them. Because even if they're not, quote, unquote, six-figure, high-value, whatever, they are still seventy, eighty-five thousand dollars $85,000-a-year dudes in that top 30% of men. There are far more guys that fit that than you. Because eight out of ten of you automatically are, are dis disqualified from most men on a fitness scale more on that later but when these two grown adults because i don't really talk to young teenagers when these two grown adults nobody's a virgin you ain't been a virgin in a long time ladies the question is what should you as a woman, give up or invest up front to land a high value man. Now, I know me asking some of you ladies, what should you give or invest up front is a speaking a foreign language. And that's sad because many of you don't think you should have to do anything except show up and be impressed. Uh, like I told young lady uh, the other night, good luck with that. Many of you cute 20-somethings end up zone. in single as French toast. I'm talking about the men that are long-term relationship, husband caliber men from the day you meet them. What should you have to give up? Or invest. Now, uh, when I asked this in, on Facebook, you know, I did get one of the popular answers I got back. Well, as a woman, I'm giving up my time. 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 <laughs> well, due respect, ladies, 80 plus percent of you don't have careers, you have jobs. I mean, you're not fast track to partner or anything. I mean, let's be honest. You have a job, your job, necessary job, but a job nonetheless. And to say you're giving up your time is foolish because he's giving up the same amount of time. He's actually giving up more because we typically have to drive to pick you up, drop you off. We're giving up equal amounts of time and money. Already an imbalance. You're right here. Time, time cancels out. He's giving up his resources. What are you giving up? In the whole courting phase. What do you... Because he's expected to impress you, ladies, right? He's expected to woo you, wine you, dine you, romance you, right? All these things, right? Well, and what do you, what should you do? Well, I go out on a date with him. I show up and I'm attractive. I mean, and after the third date, I mean, goodness sakes, we have sex. What, what else? Well, ladies, that's the problem now, ain't it? Because let me tell you, what you're bringing to, what that is, is no more special than what you've done for anybody you kicked it with. You've done the same thing for every one of your loser ex-boyfriends, one night stands, friends at benefits, flings. You've done the same level of stuff. And you expect a thorough man to get the same meal you served to other men to other lesser men let's get right down to it what are you talking about and he's getting it 
later on in life, you gave the same two piece and you gave the same two piece and a biscuit to your college sweetheart. And he got the benefit of your youth. You gave the same two piece and a biscuit to that guy you kicked it with two years out of college for 14 months. You gave the same two piece and a biscuit to the dude you were, you know, when you went on that trip to Jamaica or Las Vegas again. It's the same thing. And what I need you ladies to understand is take your emotions out of this. Understand where it's coming from from a man's standpoint. You are giving the hint, you are giving um these men, these the Blake Henrys, the Blue Henrys, the White, the, the whatever, you're giving, you're giving these PCS men the same level of effort that you have given every other man before them, but they aren't on the same level. These men are up here. These men are down here. Now, use your logical mind, ladies. Why would a man who is up here deserve down here treatment? Well, what are you saying, Kevin? Well, I'm saying one, you better get my likes up. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section. Shut up, bitch. Alexa app. Tired of you. So, you know, white girls are always trying to go above and beyond. She trying to help me even now. She's electronic. <laughs> oh, seriously, ladies, think about it. We don't even have the like. We don't even have likes up. All right, if I don't get my... Uh, this is the last warning. If I don't get my likes up over a thousand, uh, we're going to go straight to this song. If I don't get my likes up, that's where we're going. Ladies, you're older. Okay? Now, some of you may look nice, but you're not what you were in your 20s or your late teens and your 20s. Okay? And think about it. What are you giving him? What are you giving him? And this is the question a lot of you ladies need to answer. Because this is what men are thinking. He asks you out to a nice dinner date. You show up looking great in that little black dress, smelling great, heels on, and you're waiting there to have the door open, the chair pulled out for you, him order for uh, him order for you him order wine for the table and do all the initial courtship dance and you're there and you're a great you're 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 an absolutely perfect lady at the meal but that's what you do for everybody what are you doing special for a special man hello ladies what are you doing special for a special man? I mean, ain't that what we hear? I mean, ain't that's what we hear every night, guys. I don't want to run my body count up and this and that. I want to hold something back. Well, the, the older you get, the longer you're out here, the more you've dated, the less special what you're doing. Look, many of you ladies... Don't even aren't even bothered enough to go buy new lingerie or new underwear. How many of you ladies out there are wearing the same damn Victoria's Secret panties you wore for your last dude? <laughs> oh, I said it, bitch natch. Oh, I said it. Some of you are wearing the same drawers that your last man bought you. I mean, let's talk about what women used to try to do to get a man. They used to, one, one, they used to date one man at a time, especially if they thought he had a potential. Number two, so all the things they did to get ready for him, it was his benefit and his alone. And when they went out, they would go actually go, go buy a new, new set of underwear, new matching set of this and that, because nah, it was for him. Right. Back in the day, it used to be, you know, even when people were a little bit more sexually active, women used to be like, well, 
I did hook up with this guy, but he didn't, I didn't go down on him. I'm only going to do that for my man or my husband. See, right now you're doing everything for everybody. So you don't know how to treat a man who's a, a man who's special, special. Ladies, what should you have to give up front or invest up front in a special man? Because I will tell you, especially to my black women, let me tell you, shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. He did a video today talking about uh, why it's becoming more and more of a thing to where who do guys, what do guys prefer? And younger brothers, younger black men are starting to say they prefer non-black women. Uh, and you can't you can't say all the stuff you say about men over on older men. They're too young to have these issues. They're saying a lot of the same things men are saying. And it's time for you ladies to listen. And if you don't think you need to listen, I need you to look at your middle finger. If it's barren as the Sahara, you need to listen. Because I'm telling you what a lot of men think. You ain't doing nothing special for a special man, but yet you want special treatment. Just existing ain't good enough. Just giving your time ain't good enough. It's not. It's not. It's simply not. This is why so many of you cannot keep special men. You can deal with them. But so many of you call into my show every night asking me, how do I get him to marry me? How do... You're not special. You don't treat him special. I've said it before, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. You don't inspire him. You don't do anything special for him. Well, what should I do special for him? Well, uh, well, ladies, there are seven things that I say to women you should be considering giving up if you really want a special man. If you're, if you're dealing with a man and you want a special man, there are seven things you should consider uh, giving up because these are things that men off top understand and, and realize that um, you would only do for a man at his level. One, convert religions. Two, shout out to Theo. I got, I got to get Theo his own song. Convert religions. Yeah, ladies, that's what you do for a special man. A man that puts in the kind of hours Theo put in, 14, 16 hour days. Yeah. You want to do that. You want to talk about doing that up front as a gesture of saying, I recognize that you are the kind of man I say I want. And I'm going to give of myself before I get your wedding ring, before I get your engagement ring. I'm going to invest in you to the level I want you to invest in me. I'm going to prove to you that I should be Mrs. You. Oh, I'm going there tonight because many of you ladies are just freaking clueless. Thinking that just because you bring your body to the table, that's enough. Nope. Religion. Uh, how about this? When you deal with that special man, Tell them, hey, when, I, when I'm dealing with a special man, I get rid of all my social media. Volunteer to give it up. Volunteer to give up Instagram, Facebook. You know, you can watch YouTube, watch his YouTube. Say, I'm giving it all up. Psst. Matter of fact, not only going to give it up, uh, when I'm with a man, he has full access to my phone. Yep. My passcode is 123456. Anytime you want to look in the phone, you ain't even ask. You just get it. So you thought I was going to say access to your body. No, we, that's a given. Give up social media. Give up access to the phone. Leave it unlocked. I've already said it the other day. Your friends, those, those got to go over there. You got to tell your girlfriend. Back in the 70s and 80s, when a woman was dating a man, she would tell her girlfriends, girl, I got to see you. I got to. Shantae has got a man at home. I got something special over here and I can't be going to ladies night and this and that. Don't be calling me. I'll talk to you between the hours of 10 and two at work. But other than that, don't be calling me in the evening. Don't be, no, I, while I'm with him. No, 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 no. 
And the, that was your female friends. And your male friends, you shouldn't have them no way. Pow! We already discussed that. Already discussed that. Special men, high value men, they're not going to tolerate that. Not long term. They're not going to do it. You just need to know they're not going to. Um, moving. Since I already said long distance relationships are non-starters, but the way things are structured today, yeah. You need to make it known that I'm willing to move to you. Yes, up front. Yeah, I'm asking you to, and see, a lot of women are probably sitting up there with their jaw tight or like the nerve. Yes, I'm asking you to put yourself out there for a special man. That's what I'm asking you to do. You say you want a special man, then I'm asking you to put yourself out there. Don't give him the same thing you've given every other guy and expect him to be special. And I'm already assuming you don't have kids, but if you do have kids, he's going to have to be able to discipline them or really you're going to need to probably give custody of them to the daddy. As far as money, uh, that's getting to the money. Gentlemen, pay really close attention. Pay really close attention to what I'm about to say. Gentlemen, pay really close attention. All right. My likes still aren't up there. So I've asked you once. I've asked you twice. Get my likes up. I'm going to need five more people to drop five bucks. I'm not playing. Get my likes up, man. Let's get it. All right, ladies, gentlemen, pay attention. What I'm about to say, this is going to cause some controversy. There's an old adage in uh, crime, and when you're trying to solve a mystery, crime, something like that, there's an old adage, follow the money. Follow the money. Why? Because money tells the truth. Gentlemen, if a woman is not willing to spend any money on you, pay attention. You heard the other night how these women talk about they go on three or four dates a week with three or four different guys. And guess what? It's because somebody's spending money on them. But women like that, there's a guy, there's usually been a man in her life that she's willing to spend money on him. She's going to go buy him the new J's. Going to go buy him a new bottle of uh, Magnetic Blend 7 because, you know, she's trying to get, she's trying to have his baby. She's going to go buy him. Oh, I heard Godfather talking about this Cartier Amber Oud. So I ordered that from Bloomingdale's and I made sure they shipped it to you. Did you get it? Yeah. If you've never had a woman spend money on you, it's because she don't give a shit about you. She's not into you. She likes you. She may be cool with you. But if a woman doesn't spend anything on you, pay attention. Pay close attention. Up front. So you hear all these women talking about going Dutch and this and that. Yeah, they're willing to go Dutch. They're willing to pay for what they had. And if you had iced tea and she had water, they're going. she's going to make sure that the iced tea is on your bill. They, a woman who's not willing to spend a dime on you, you better pay real close attention. Facts. If a woman is not willing to spend anything on you, I'm not talking about buying, picking you up a, 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 a caramel macchiato on the way to your house. No, I'm talking about unplanned expenses. I'm talking about over a hundred dollars, and I'm talking about a bro. I'm talking about she made twenty dollars an hour, and she bought you the new PlayStation Five.
ladies, special men should be treated specially. They should be treated special. And if you expect a special man to be the to be this man he is, guess what? These guys are gentlemen. They're going to do what they're going to do. But they're not going to deal with you. They're not going to take you seriously. And I tell guys, don't take them, don't take her seriously. If she is not willing to give up anything for you, invest in you, pour into you, understand your hopes, wants, and dreams, and try to, and, and if she's not already from the get-go trying to figure out how to make your shit better, not, not make you do what she wants to do, how to make your stuff better. If she's not interested in things that are interesting, you're interested in cycling, and she's not, well, you know what? Um, there's a new bike shop that opened and I heard this, if she's not interested in anything you're interested in, if it's always about her, run, 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 run. Meep, meep. It will, it won't last. So ladies, what should you be willing to invest up front to, for a special man? See, I don't want to have a conversation tonight about, well, how do I know he's special? That's not what I'm talking about. I don't want to hear any of that. If that's what we're going to talk about tonight, don't call in because that's deflection. I'm not going to talk about how do we know he's special? How do we know it's not a game? How do we know it's not this? Seek therapy. Get help with your fear-based issue having self. Fine. If that's where you're at, leave the dating world alone. Go on over to Dr. Phil or somebody Check yourself in and get you because if that's how you're coming out here, don't take anybody's date. Don't take anybody. You need some help. And see, the funny thing is, I've heard women in this very YouTube space willing to do the most god awful, crazy, sexual, nasty things, but wouldn't spend two dollars on a deal. It's like you're gonna give him your whole body. You're gonna give him access to. This orifice, that orifice, and this. But you're going to hold on to that purse. Think about what I just said, guys. You know you've heard women talk about this. What? Oh, he can get it any way he wants to, but I ain't spending a dime on a dude. If she's not willing to spend anything on you up front, guys, you're not special to her. If she's not willing to treat you special up front, you're not special. And you need to keep reminding yourself. Keep asking yourself, am I special to her? Shout out to Alpha Male Strategies. One thing he says that, that he used to do, he says his little thing, that he, I remind myself, they're all sleuths. Now, that's his level setting thing. And, and while you may not agree with it, the premise is that in order to keep himself level, he reminds himself that, we're out here dating. And why would a man have to say that kind of stuff? Because men in here, in the modern dating, guys realize the women are out here dating multiple guys. Got multiple, you, you can't, you can't, you cannot question, you cannot know. And until a woman starts treating you special, you have to assume you're not special to her and move accordingly. Ladies, if you want a special man to treat you special, you're going to have to treat him special up front. You want the wedding ring? You're going to have to invest up front. Not once, not twice. You're going to have to invest the way. Oh, here it goes. He who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. If you want to be a wife, you're going to have to invest up front like a wife would up front. Oh, snit. I know that I know that's throwing some of you for a loop because you still want to talk about, well, how do we know? Well, how do we know? Well, what if this? Well, what if that? Again, seek therapy, get help. I, that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing the fact that you are a grown woman with your college degree. I'm a PhD. And everything else you got going on. You're smart, you're intelligent, all this other kind of stuff. You you can do all the homework. And we're gonna go on the fact that you're out here amongst men and you're able to pick well. And you say that this guy is a different caliber, then where's the upfront special treatment? Outside of the bedroom. Yeah, let's get into it. He needs to be treated upfront special in the bedroom, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the car, and in public. Oh, man. I know there's some women that's hot right now. Like, what? What? Mm. 
Mm. And the truth is, not not just birthdays, not just Christmas. No, because it's Tuesday. Just like you want special, you want him to bring, you want him to buy you flowers. You want you want just because. Then yes, just because. And here's the thing, ladies, if you're not willing to do it, don't worry. Some don't worry. Becky is. I'm gonna go there. Don't worry, Becky is. Don't worry, Marisol will. Don't worry, I knew wants the job. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, my ling was my ling's on it. And you can sit over there with your defiant. I ain't letting no man take advantage of me. And da, 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 da. You can sit over there with your <coughs> with your dog by yourself and your girlfriends and, and everything else. Like your Tracy Ellis Ross, I'm happily single but open. No. The social contract used to be a man's resources for access to your youth and your womb. But guess what? That doesn't exist anymore. You ladies are still expecting men to do the traditional roles, and men don't have a problem with that. But what men are not going to do is they're not going to elevate a woman to the level of wife who does not treat him special up front. That's the essence of FBI. Inspiration means to treat him special to where he knows he's different than anyone else. You need to do it and you need to tell him you're doing it. Oh, let's also get into it. Uh, You not only need to treat him special, you need to make a show of it. You need to tell your friends you treat him special. You need to tell his friends how special he is. You need to tattoo that shit on your forehead, get your pom-poms and become Team Henry. Oh, I know y'all mad. Now, what? Y'all want me to get out here and be pick me and campaigning for a dude? That's, yes, you're the campaign manager for your man. And if not, sit your ass down over. Welcome to Spinsterhood, Miss Habersham. Because again, we're talking about a special man. It ain't many of them out there. To let y'all tell you, ain't a whole lot of them out there. Well, then if, then if you run across one, you dumb for not doing something special, right? I mean, ain't many really good jobs out there with good benefits packages and all this other kind of stuff. So if you find a perfect job, perfect work hours, perfect work life, perfect work life balance, perfect benefits, great salary, great this, you'd be a fool to pass that up, right? How would you interview for that position? See, y'all know how to do this. Y'all know how to do it when it doesn't come attached to an X and a Y chromosome. Especially when it comes attached to an X and a Y chromosome and it's in a black package. Oh, shit. Hmm. Hmm. Your ladies are falling down on your job. Because you are treating every man out here as they... That's that you're you're treating every man out here as they're your daddy. You're treating every man out here as they're your deadbeat baby daddy. You're treating every man out here as they're your deadbeat college boyfriend. You're treating every man out here that they did what those other guys in your past did. That's your problem. That's why you were uh, Danger Zone Single AF. A whole lot of broken short-term relationships. Whole lot of broken short-term relationships. And so many women are feeling like I feel hopeless because uh, you're not willing to treat a man special. You're not even really you're not even willing to understand what that means. Treating special. I broke it off. I bent over. I did the splits. I did a backflip on it. That's that's not special. They did it for your last boyfriend. Right? I mean, so here's what I want to ask you, ladies. Who has any questions? Because I'm going to open it up tonight. But 
you know, I, what I said earlier, if she's not willing to consider changing religions, dropping all her social media, putting her friends on the back burner, dumping, putting her female friends on the back burner, dumping her male friends, moving. If their children evolve, if you can't discipline the children like they are yours, or if she's not willing to give custody to the father, you're not special. But the biggest one of all is money. Money tells the truth. If she's not willing to spend a dime on you, or if she's only willing to spend a dime on you, if she's not willing to break bread and be proud of it, I'm not talking about buy you a PlayStation 5. I'm talking about buy you a PlayStation 5 and tell her girlfriends that she bought you a PlayStation 5. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ain't talking about she's willing to take pay for dinner tonight. She's getting benefited out of that too. You're going to learn today. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. If you agree with the things I've said tonight, do me a favor. Put a one in the chat room. 3,000 people in here watching. Guys, if you agree with any things I've said tonight, put a one in the chat room. Because I really believe that there's a disconnect between the many modern women today and the men that they say they want and what they're willing to do. And the sad thing is many women were not raised to think of men as something to be treated special. Here's the thing. I understand, ladies. I understand you do, you weren't raised to look at men this way. I get it. I I truly understand you were not raised to think of them that way. No one you being this is the first time you've heard this kind of stuff. Now again, we're talking about talking about husband level men, long term relationship kind of men. We're talking about the kind of man you say you want. You never really were told to think of a man as anything other than a possible heartbreak or a liability. You were not taught to think that having a man of a, having a special man makes your life better. And it's what you and it's what a lot of you want, but you were programmed something different. But the fact of the matter is. Men are not going, men do not, should not, and will not say, well, all right, you didn't learn. No, you still going to have to because a special man knows his worth, knows his value. And just like if you had a car or a home or something and you knew it was worth something, you wouldn't sell it for half. Special people hold out for... for uh, special people know their value and they'll get it. And see, far too many women today believe your value is high and it's higher than it really is. But no one's buying you. I've shown that on this show that many of you ladies believe your value is far higher than it is. You overrank yourself. You overestimate yourself. You overestimate your value and you don't have anybody buying you. You certainly don't have a uh, high credit, you know, high credit rating buyers. You certainly don't have premium buyers trying to buy you. And at the end of the day, ladies, you are a product. You are the seller of the product, which is you. Men are the buyer. If everybody that's ever test drove you never signed the paperwork, Never got on one knee, presented a ring of significant carriage in public, proposed marriage to you. That's how we keep score. If this never happened, you just had a bunch of test drives. Then someone comes along with great credit, their own financing, and enough cash to buy it. 
and you just and you give them, you present the same old car that everybody else in test drove. You didn't even take the time to go detail it. Armor all the tires, put some new car smell in it. You just say, here it is. It's on the lot. Oh. Who lost out? Because if he has the credit, the cash, and the financing, there's plenty of cars out there. And there are lots that are coming in and saying, hey, sir, come on in. There are lots of that where salespeople are actively calling and saying, hey, come on in. We'll send an Uber to come get you. You ladies are not nearly active enough. You're not nearly anxious enough. You are not nearly thirsty enough. Let's just go. That's the word. That's the word. You're not nearly thirsty enough for pick me shit enough. You're not. You're so fucking cool. You can't be bothered. You're just. Uh, and, and, and Becky got no problem being a pick me shit, being thirsty, flirting and everything else. Y'all don't even know how to flirt no more. Let's go there. Seven more minutes I've opened the call line. It's gotten so bad that many of you ladies, you don't even know how to flirt anymore. You're just fucking there. Flirt? What's flirt? When's the last time you wrote? Can you? Did you write them little love letters or anything? Have you done anything that's girly? I'm here. I'm busy. Bish, bye. No, that's not gonna work for these guys. Because remember, you're used to men competing. You're used to men competing with the men that are around you. No, ladies. You're competing with the women who are around the special guy. You're used to people trying to compete to get in your draws. You're trying to compete to get his ring, his last name. That's why you may be a prize, but he's the catch. I told y'all this was going to be tight tonight. I told you it's going to be real tight tonight. Mm -hmm. What should she invest for special men? What should she invest for a special man? And if this is too much for you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. But somebody needed to tell you. Somebody needed to tell you that uh, just being cute ain't enough. Somebody needed to tell you that uh, men are paying attention. That what you think is important ain't important to him. Somebody needed to tell you, and I'm telling you in in in, in love. Yeah. Luna. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero.
money world Yo digo las cosas como son No sí. quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves Sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money work yeah. El mundo quiere dinero yeah. Yeah. Money work Come on. Se arregla con dinero yeah. Let's get it Let's go Lata. I switched up the Money World stuff. I switched it up because I wanted to. Money World. But I still like my Money World, girl. Come on, ladies. Stream on in. Ask your questions. Remember, though. Now, I put that thumbnail out there because I knew when I asked this question, there's going to be a lot of women like, ha! Huh? What? What do I need to give up? What do I need to invest? Girl, he gets all this loving. He gets me. Uh, What does that mean? What does that mean? He gets you. You get him. I mean, really, think about the level of some of you ladies, what you're basically saying. That it ain't no nothing special. You get nothing special, sir. Un unmute yourself, Stephanie. Hello? I can. Is this your picture? Yeah. All right. Are those your children? Yeah. And I have a third. Okay. So what do you got for me? Okay. I have two questions for you. So one, I want to know about the uh, women who work. So sometimes I get confused. So sometimes it's so like women who should... work. Yeah, no. So the question is, um, for example, sometimes you'll say that uh, you won't date anyone if they're broke. But then sometimes I get a different vibe from men that kind of like, but then you'll be like, did you go to college or how? So where's the standpoint? I mean, do you guys want a career woman or not? Uh, okay, you're asking me about me? Or just in general, no, the vibe of the channel or the uh, men. Well, the most, men don't or... want, most men don't want a broke chick. But okay. the bigger question is, uh, have you been married? Yeah, I was married when I was younger. So, you know, the whole college thing, met him first semester, that whole early 20s. How long were you guys married? Uh... The marriage was like a year, but the relationship in total was like four. How, so it was many, like the whole- How many fathers? You have three kids. How many different fathers? I have two. So my first daughter, um, I, like single mom by choice. So I actually just single did that Single mom by own. choice? Yes. And then- We call that a baby uh, mama. Yeah. 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 So, and then I'm with my fiance now, which leads me to my second question. And we have two kids together. All right. So I don't understand the question. If you got a fiance, what does it matter? Well, no. So that, well, we've been engaged for like three years. So it's that whole thing. What? Living together, but I know. Oh uh, yeah. I know so then you're, you're engaged for three years. Don't just roll past that. You're engaged for three no, years. No, I know. I, I totally agree. All oh, right. I don't, yeah. I don't, I need you to breathe, man. Okay. <laughs> right, I don't know your story and you're not going to just glance past things. You weren't a single mother by choice, you're a baby mama. I call things yeah. what they are. And you've been engaged okay. three years. You yeah. ain't getting married. That's what I, okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. But, but, that that, but that's not the question you asked. You asked me about dating a broke chick. No, I said I have two questions. So I all right. asked first. Well, first about... of all, I don't, I, don't, I don't date bum bitches. I don't date bums. I date professional okay. women. I date women who have something to lose. If I'm okay. going to date a woman, that means a woman, someone that's over Danger zone. 27, she needs to be professional. If I choose to okay. date somebody in their early 20s, it's kind of impractical to ask them to have a career. But I do prefer them to be at least in college because uh, I'm a refined kind of guy. 
Yeah. Now, the thing is, overall, most men don't want women. They don't want broke women. Um. Well, no, I'm not broke. Yeah, but that's but, what but, I'm oh, saying. And, and, okay. What is it you're trying to ask me? The two part question. My friends and I always debate because sometimes when you're trying to ascertain the opinion of men, on one end it is my woman has to have this and that, which I do. But Your on the friends other are saying hand, this? Your friends are trying to ascertain this? Yeah, like girl talk over Cosmos, like just trying to figure things out. And okay. so then on They're the single? other No, no. No, my best friend's married. Uh, ladies, ma'am, I don't yeah. understand why women in relationships are trying to figure out what men are doing. Why is this even a conversation? I'm, well, I'm, being, I'm being dead, I'm being dead serious. Be a, I'm being dead so serious. Can, listen, yeah, listen, I, listen, listen, this is what I'm about to say. You have three children. Yeah. And a fiance. Mm -hmm. Why are you even on my channel? You got, it was, it was seen to me that if you were a serious woman, and I mean, no offense, ma'am, you got other things that should be taking priority other than what a man on YouTube is saying about dating when that's not your lived reality. Well, no, I totally understand. I stumbled on your channel, but what I'm saying is very interesting to me to hear the channel and I agree with a lot of it but what I'm saying to you, my situation you could be in a relationship and you're still trying to get it to where you want to be because being engaged for three years certainly is not what I planned so you would always want to figure out what your partner is thinking no coming to a YouTube channel won't tell you what your partner's thinking a conversation will tell you what your partner's thinking but I will tell you, ma'am, that if you've been engaged for three years, you don't have good communication with your partner. In terms of saying that... In other words, ma'am, if you've been engaged for three years, did you want to be engaged for three years? No. Then why are you? Well, that's because I had the children, which, it, which was fine. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, All you have to do is go to the courthouse. Exactly. So I say again, you don't have good communication with the man you made babies with. You say you have two children with this guy? Yes, of course. The children uh, are the okay, problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Let me tell you why they're the problem. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you why. You already got one child by one man. You got okay. two, you got two children by your baby daddy. He's not your husband. So you're a two-time baby mama. And the likelihood of you marrying this guy you've been engaged with for three years, uh, where do you buy your ring from? He bought my ring from K Jewelers. And how long ago did you get it? Like right almost at the beginning. So like I don't know it's what that means. On, it's going on in 2017. So you've been wearing a three year engagement ring and you've had two babies. Yeah. This is why this is relevant. You make bad decisions. So that's what I'm saying. Oh, so do you agree? I need you to shut up and listen, okay. please. Okay. See, you talk too much. And what I'm telling you is you don't want to hear what I'm about to say. You got one baby talking about you, a single mother by choice. No, you're a baby mama and you made a bad decision. Then you decided to get involved with a guy who bought you a ring that you say in 2017. And you produced two more children. But before walking down the aisle, that was not smart. You should have made a marriage prerequisite before you had child one or child two but you didn't so now you're in a situation to where when this falls apart as it will you're going to be out here with three children by two different dudes and a bunch of baggage that's why you're watching these channels because you know you're about to be out here again single one day i i totally agree that's so okay so i'm not crazy then so i do think this is going to fall apart then well, you're so not you're, but you're, cra but no you're crazy okay you're, the craziness is why you're here you're here you came in the side door instead of just addressing the truth that's why it's crazy instead of saying you know what i'm a two-time baby mama and i've been engaged for three years you're asking me about men dating broke women man that's a tangential deflectionary thing your problem is front and center. How old are your two children? The youngest? My kids? three kids. No, they're five and under. Yeah.
<laughs> like the music on me. Yeah, you're done. You're I agree. You're finished. I agree. This is a wrap. You are done. I agree. You're done. I agree. No, we keep. Well, the question no, is, why would why would you have two more kids? You already got one child out of wedlock. Why, no, would, I, my, why would you go have two? Plans. I wanted my children for sure. I, I don't. What What was the question I asked you? You said, why would you have two more kids? Because I wanted two more kids. That's I not all I asked, together. lady. Oh, okay. I said, why would you have two more children out of wedlock? I don't know. Probably just the baby fever, maybe. I well, not maybe. That's probably that's definitely what it was. How do you? I prioritize the children How over. You... I'm 39. What did your father do for a living? My dad's like an author. You know, political. How long your mother and father were married? They've been married for a long time, but it's 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 complicated. But legally, no. yes, technically married for for I don't know how long now. Maybe. Maybe thirty years. You don't know how long your parents are married. Because because it's they their their relationship is complicated. But are they? Yeah, married and yours is not. Years? No, I'm I'm I definitely. Man, what I'm trying to show you, what I'm trying to let you understand, ma'am, is even on this conversation, you have been talking a hundred miles an hour. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is, if you're 39 and your parents have been married 30 years, there's all kind of. You didn't prioritize being a wife. I did not. Exactly. I did not. So being a broke woman is not the concern. You need therapy, ma'am. For prioritizing, for not prioritizing no, you need, being you a need wife? therapy, period. Per something's going on with you. To, to sit down, to, okay, to sit, here and call, to sit here and call into a YouTube show and to say, uh, what's going on? I got two questions. And you ask a question about you know, men not wanting broke women. When the real situation is you came in and said, I'm a voluntary single mother. No, ma'am, you a baby mama. Single mother sounds too nice. You had a child out of wedlock without marriage. That's a baby mama. Then, okay. then you went and did it two more times. You've got three children under five years old from two different dudes. See, we make people have to take more uh, tests to drive a car than to make a life. You got no plan for these children. You wanted. Of course, I do. No, you cannot have. Okay, ma'am. Huh. Then you plan to have more children out of wedlock when you say you have a fiance. What are you asking me about? Yes, you Previously, plan to have. You say, Do I, no, no, more? I'm saying you plan. No, no, you have two more. You have, you have three. You have two children, additional yeah. children out of wedlock to a fiance. Yeah, we both plan to have our children. But why not get married first? What I'm saying to you is that I why did not, not get married first because you did, did not prioritize not. marriage because you had no plan for these kids. I had planned for my children, of course. What plans? Why do, is what, it what the plans do, what, what plans do you have for these children if a with a, if a father if a, if a daddy ain't in it? No, no, no. He's a he's a good man. He has. We're going to be a blended family. He has children. He's not. He's not. There's no father issues. Even if something were to happen, you have been no, ma'am, ma'am, ma ma listen. Three years you've been engaged. Yes. Why did you not go down and get married once you before you had another child? Like you said, I did not prioritize that. And that's the truth. You hit it but on you, the name. You didn't prioritize it, but you planned on getting pregnant. To to me, ma'am, I, I no 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 ma'am. I'm asking direct question. Yes, yes. You, you guys were you get, no ma'am, listen. You got pregnant on purpose. Yes. You got pregnant on purpose with the second child. Yes. Yes. And then you got pregnant on purpose with the third child. Yes. And you think this is planning a family. 
Well, the it was planning a family to me because we had both agreed on how things were going to move and how things were going to happen. Right. And part of and that I, was and part of that was supposed to be getting married. Yes. So and that did that not happen. Sense. Exactly. And why did you have the second child from him? Well, because I am not going to Exactly. Ma'am, you need ma'am, you need therapy. You're not you're not getting it. You're not the, the it, it you're not getting it. You're just not getting it. And I don't have time for this on the show, ma'am, but I'm saying you created broken homes. You had a broken home with the first child. And we need to start calling these things what they are, broken homes. Women creating, bro baby mamas create broken homes. You got one broken home and you're about to have another broken home. You need to stop making broken homes. You need to slow down and stop making babies until you know what you're doing. Oh, no, I'm not having any more children. I'm done. This is ridiculous. I'll tell you why she was more attention. I'll tell you why she watched the show because it's deflection. Because what's going on in her life right now is is too troubling. What? What? I gotta. Uh, yeah. No. 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 Miss Clark, go ahead and open. What in the world? Uh, nah, Nayla. Wow. How did this willy nilly making babies like la 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 la? Unmute yourself, please, Nayla. Clark. All right. All right. So. Um, ladies, what should you have to invest? It amazes me that some of you guys that just don't mind, don't mind throwing baby out the baby out there, but you can't go to the justice of the peace. Um, put moderators, put the link in the chat room. She pray go trap the, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Plans. I don't need no plans for that. So back to what we were saying, follow the money guys, follow the money. Follow the money. And the thing is, if a woman is not willing to spend anything on you, that should, that should tell you something. And sadly, this is a major divide amongst uh, black women and black men because I've shared a story about the first time I actually got treated nice by a non-black woman. I was confused. Um, while more callers start to call in, you're starting to see more young, you know, black men under 21. So y'all can't say these young guys out here hate women or whatever. They were raised by their mothers and they see what they see and they're like, I'm tired of this treatment, this attitude. And I'm like, guys, Ladies, what are you going to do if the special men, the productive, competitive, successful men, the high earners, the, 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 the men you want that have the, the resources, mindset, and ability to build a stable family, if they're not picking, if you're not willing to treat them special, or do anything any different for them than you did for all the other guys that shit went nowhere. What's the point? I mean, because this is what we're talking about. Every other man you've been with, you've broken up with. If this guy has the ability to go all the, the entire distance, when are you going to start treating him special? Or is it you're too afraid to do it. You don't know how. You don't know how. You're not willing to ask. Or ultimately, you're too afraid to do it. Then, it, But either way, if it doesn't happen, who do you blame if you blow it? If you don't, if you don't know how, you don't know what special treatment really means, if you're too 
proud or too afraid or too whatever to ask. Ms. Capers, unmute yourself. Or you're too scared, afraid, or whatever. Who do you blame when you don't get the outcome you want? I got a, you, I got, you got, we have women wanting adult outcomes with childish mindsets. Hello? How are you? What do you got for me? It's about the topic. Go ahead. <laughs> but the question is, um, because I definitely appreciate that uh, that perspective that men want to be made to feel special. I certainly could agree with that too. But my question is like, where do you find the um, like the balance in treating a man special but not being used as a woman? You know, you don't uh, see, see right there, right there. It's a what, fear I'm scared. <laughs> yep, it's a fear-based question. <laughs> it's a fear-based question. Notice how you ladies can, everything has come from fear. So let me let me reframe the question. Where do where do men find the balance with treating you special and getting hmm. used? <laughs> See, I, I don't know how to answer that from your perspective. You know, I just no. But the, the <laughs> thing is, from a man's perspective, you don't give a shit. We're just supposed to do it. And you and can you say this question is coming from a place of abundance? I would say this question is coming from a place of caution. At, at, no, know, no, at no, 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 no. Caution because of what? Caution because of caution because of you want to you have to protect yourself. Uh huh. So again, I already gave the I already prefaced it and said it's the kind of man that makes all a special guy, and you still want to proceed with caution. Yeah. Yeah. Then you, you, then, you, then, then then get therapy and stay away. You're not ready. And guys don't need to waste their time with situations like this. If you had a son or you had a brother that was this th kind of thorough man, right? Mm -hmm. Would you want his girlfriend to be telling him, I'm going to proceed with caution? Or would you be some kind of pissed off at her little butt, wouldn't you? I mean... <laughs> possibly oh but... you wouldn't okay so you nope. so you want to put all so i want to be clear you want to make your son the kind of man that you're proud of and you would want him to get the same kind of treatment that every other guy out there who's not as special as your son you want him to get the same stuff no of course not well, i want then, him to be treated very special well then but 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 but, but exactly ma'am every man you're dealing with is somebody's son and they're proud right. of him right but right. all you're worried about is you yeah the, and, and, but but to be fair, I am worried about myself, and that's that's only because of you know just past things that have happened that I want to you know not not you? have not not. How old are you? Thirty-three. Danger zone. <laughs> what? Why am I in the danger zone? Because you're twenty-seven to thirty-five. So, and okay. what you're saying is, hey, Kevin, I want to proceed. And I want to go forward and I want to be treated special. Mm -hmm. But yet I want to proceed and treat other men in accordance with how other men have treated me. No, that, no. I, I want to treat men special. I do because I, under, I understand. But, do you, I, but, but did not do you want to do you. I have and it's blown up in my face. In oh, the past. so um, you're 33. Mm -hmm. Ever been in a car accident? No. Hmm. You ever you ever ride a bicycle? Yes. You ever fall down on the bike? Yes. Did you of stop? course. Did you stop? You're right. Get back up. I mean, Try seriously, again. lady. See, it keeps coming. It keeps coming back around. Yeah. You still are saying, "I was hurt before, mm -hmm. and I want to be hurt again." Guess what, man? You want men to expose themselves and risk all. Okay. Do, do you ask if the men you were dating have been hurt before? Let me let you all know. Yeah, most of them have. Of course. And uh, guess what? They're paying the bill to be hurt. Hmm. This is why I say you ladies, in, that you need therapy because it what you're saying makes sense to you until a man asks you logical questions and you can't even stand on it. Before this conversation tonight, you would have continued to move on down the path of what you're doing is justified. 
Well, to, cause, because to, to, when you, that's like a natural reaction that you want to protect yourself. But I, I understand that you no, got to be No, it's not a natural to, reaction. You have to put your guard down. Nope. You know, I want to be able to put, to put the guard down, but it does, no, it, man, it helps me remind it's not a natural reaction. Why, why do non-black women not respond the way that black women like yourself respond? You guys act like you're special victims as if the kind of hurt you've had has been so different than anybody else's hurt. What do you talk about? Did somebody cheat on you? Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that. Well, it what was, was it? It was like, it was like just a lot of like lying and stuff like that. And, uh, and, um, were you well, guys I in wasn't a monog- dealing with the best person. Okay. Well, first of all, were you guys in a monogamous committed relationship? Yes. Did you guys have that conversation and establish that? Yes, we did. That's number two, why did you pick the guy you picked? If you said he wasn't the best person. Because I, I was much I was much younger. How, this, this, how old were you? I was 22. 11 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Yes, it was a, it was a, I, it was I, traumatic. I, I let me, let, no offense, man, but you ain't went through slavery. You ain't <laughs> went through nothing. 20, 11 years ago, you had your feelings hurt. No, 11, 11 years ago, I, I realized that like people will lie and, and, and be oh, very okay. All right. So and, have you, uh, have you ever broken up with a man? Of course. Uh, have you ever lied to a man? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I've lied to it, man, but not not about like not about like. Oh, of course not. It's, of course, things. it's always different when you guys do it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> See, this is why it's you. Not... This is why you ladies talk to each other, and this shit makes sense to you. Eleven right. years ago, somebody lied to you and hurt your feelings. Get over it. You expect okay? How about this? Hey. Tom, Tom is 33 years old. And he's like, man, I don't treat these women in, I don't treat these women special. I treat them like they ain't like, they don't mean nothing. Why? Cause man, 11 years ago, this chick lied to me. What would you say about that dude? I've listened to be honest. I've heard that before from men. Right. And you say, what, and what do you think of those men? Um, maybe they're being a little dramatic possibly. Right. Um, well, I, I I was thinking that it was like a natural reaction that you you got to go forward with like your armor what, all. What up. did your daddy say? Uh, I wouldn't know. I didn't ask him. Uh, oh, okay, of course. I would if I could. Right. Well, what men do you talk to about this? Huh. Well, to... God is a man. What? What you say? I said, God is a man. Man, let me go ahead and slap the shit out of you. Don't you come in here bringing that God stuff to me. <laughs> See, this is why so many of our sisters are just, you don't talk to you. You have no relationship with your dad. You don't talk to men. You keep the counsel of women and you're special victims. And this is why I feel so sorry for so many of our sisters because you sound like a perp- you sound like a nice woman, man. But um, at 30, if, if you are still stuck on something that happened, in your early 20s or your 30s, uh, buy a dog or get a cat. And welcome I mean, to Spencer I've, I've dated I've dated men since then. Right. I've dated but have men you ever but have you ever even been close to being a fiance? Not not in a relationship that I would have agreed, not in something that I would have been happy in. No. What hold on. What does that mean? I mean that I was I was kind of talking to someone and it, it was a, it was, it was a relationship that was going in that direction. But the more I sat down and thought about it, it was our, our, um, our values did not align. What are you talking Overall, about? So our values. Hold on, align. hold on, hold on. You're saying, so you were dating somebody. Mm-hmm. Were you intimate with this person? Yes. And he wanted to marry you? Yes. But your moral, your values didn't align. Yeah. So why are your genitals aligning? <laughs> True that. See, 
This is what I do with you ladies. I turn it all back to you and see how messy you mm-hmm. guys are. Mm-hmm. And if you handle your professional business like you handle your romantic business, you'd be freaking fired. And this is why so many black women are by themselves because this is a mess. Mm-hmm. You pick poorly. You're involved with a dude that ain't worth nothing. And then going forward, you expect to meet guys like I'm talking about and then make them pay for your bad choices that you made. (coughs) Buy a dog. Because, ma'am, at this rate, you will die alone. Reach 40 years old and unmarried and the chances of you getting married successfully are less than 3%. That's so dismal. Well, you chose it. You chose it because at 22 years old, you chose to keep going and dating losers. I, I've been I've been on my own for, for quite a I while. I don't care. At 18 years, and what I mean, ma'am, is I, I don't care is what I'm saying is the world does not owe you or me understanding. The world does not have to hear our sob stories. We're, uh, you're, you're an adult. Did you go to college? Yes. Did you get a bachelor's? Yes. Did you get a master's? No. Okay, you got a bachelor's. You're educated. You're smart enough to know, you, but, but you haven't had a therapist. I have I have started. Um, I, I did go to a therapist for a little while, and when? it was to, you know, work, work out a couple of things. When? When um I went I went about a year or two ago. It was For like what? two years ago. I went. Hmm? For what? For what? For just to deal with like you know mental health. Everyone's on this mental health. Right. Thing. And how many sessions did you attend? I went I went like once every other week for a good like five or six months. Five or six once every other week. So that's twice mm-hmm. a okay. So that's twice a month. Mm-hmm. So you went to maybe 10 sessions, 10, 12 sessions. And then you quit. Well, I, I moved. And oh, okay. I, <laughs> I didn't really feel like I needed it anymore. Exactly. Yeah, you sound perfectly well adjusted. I'm much more well adjusted than you're giving me credit for. Well, look at your left sir. look at your left ring finger and tell me what your fiance's name is. I'm not I'm not engaged yet, but I, I'm. But this I'm is, but ma'am, I, but, and I said that, ma'am, to be joking. But see, your being well adjusted is all relative. I care about outcomes, and ma'am, you don't sound like you're any anywhere close to being in mind space to being in a, 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 a stable, healthy, productive relationship. You haven't had enough of a conversation with me. Oh, so. I don't. But I yes, I have. Trust me, I do this in real life, and I'm pretty good at reading people. So you can back that shit down. <laughs> Yeah, the defensive laughter doesn't change anything. I know what I'm talking about. You pick poorly. And then when asked about your choices, you deflect. You lack accountability, ma'am. I've taken full accountability. No, you no, I have forced I have made you take accountability. Nothing you came on here talking about held you accountable. In go, my life. No, ma'am, go back and listen to this segment. And here's the thing. Look, no one owes you or me. You're 33 years old. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have children one day? No, I do not. Good, because the chances of having them are pretty low. If you'd like to be married, would you like to be married? I would like to be married. Why? I would like to be married because I would like someone to share my life with, and I would like to share someone else's life. But what's the purpose of marriage? What, to have kids? Because I never wanted to have kids, and that's why our values didn't align. He was planning his whole family, and I wasn't. Buy I just, a I, dog, huh? Buy, Buy a, a dog. dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no man needs to go through this, unless let's just do this. How tall are you? I'm five seven and some change. You kind of tall. Dress size. Dress size is a ten. How much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? Um. I don't remember, to be honest. Oh, yeah, you do. Every woman knows how much they weigh. I don't know how much I weigh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I really don't. Really, really. really. Okay. I don't focus on the scale. Of of, of course. The last time you weighed yourself, about how much did you weigh? 
I can fit into my jeans the last time I the tried. The last time you weighed yourself, how much did you weigh? I don't remember. Yes. You know why? Why? Ty, please. I I take I yeah, take of my course, body of course you got a freaking cat up here. Um, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Of course you fine. You, yeah, uh, of course, course. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, you just yeah, you a diva. Mr. Yeah. Kevin, you Yeah, you're you right. Mm -hmm. Be nice to you, be nice to me, but I tell you what. Don't start lying to me. I don't know how much I weigh. Yeah, because you're afraid of the scale. Oh, I'm per I'm perfectly fine. I fit into my jeans. Shit, you fit in your you fit in the state too. You fit in your car. There's fitting in something is not the standard. Five foot seven and some change, a dress size 10, which really means a 14. Come on, man. You don't know me well enough. I know you too well. And the point ultimately is this. This is what's out here talking about. I need a high value man. I need a, a man that's six feet tall making six figures or more. And da -da 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 -da. This is what's out there. Th saying that somebody should court them. And date them and wait two, three months. This is what a lot of guys are hearing. Hmm. Yeah, how do you take care of yourself if you know how much you weigh, right? I know. And again, for the people who don't understand, it was going fine until she started getting that attitude and started trying to lie to me. I don't like being lied to. I just asked your weight, ma'am. And you're not being honest if you tell them you don't remember how much you weigh. You got to mute the YouTube in the background. Hello? Hi. First name, please. Hi, Celeste. What should a woman invest in a... What should, what should a woman give up or invest up front in a special guy? What should they give up? Well, what they should, should give up... Yeah, they should give up. Um, well, I can speak for myself in, in some of the accountability that I have towards myself is, you know, what we've thought we've known from the past, you know, um, past mistakes, um, looking at what friends and families are doing, pretty much giving up old self or what you think, you know, or what society tells you that you should do. In okay. order to learn. How old are you? You know. So that's what I'm beyond the danger zone. I'm 38. Okay. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Look, the danger <laughs> zone, let me explain something. The danger zone just is what that is there for is for women to start paying attention to what they want. If you want to be married and have children between 27 and 35, you better focus like a laser because you can't play. If you're past that, it just means life is different. That does not mean life is over. So you're 38. Um, and you and the reason I'm asking the question is what should a woman be willing to give up uh or invest up front in a special guy is because um a lot of guys want to know what women right. what a woman's portion should be today. Would you like to be married one day? Absolutely. Um are children still uh on the table for you? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, are you seeing somebody right now? Yes, that's the reason why. I call, that's what the reason why I'm actually calling. Um, I am. It's actually in the first phases of, um, you could say, courtship or dating. All right. And yes. how, how, is this your picture? Yes, that's me. How recent? How recent is that? Uh, like four months ago. Okay. Attractive. So. Thank you. All right. So you're seeing someone. Does he yes. want to marry you? So that's the question. So we just literally started talking about a month ago. All right. And you pointed something out where I said, you know what? I really want to ask you this question. How do we know that we're picking wrong or we're, we're picking, we're not picking the right guys or how we vetting the men is really 
my right. issue. All right. Yes. Well, let's let's start with some basic stuff. Um, do you have YouTube playing in the background? No, I'll have you on speaker. I'll take you off my speakerphone. Hold on okay. a second. All right. Okay, can you hear me? I can now. Okay, so, perfect. You want to be married? Yes. And you want children? Yes. At 38 years old, you already <laughs> know that you know the stats. Yes. Does the man you're dating want to be married? Yes. Yes, he's actually divorced um, for four years now, and he has two um, two children. Does the man you're dating want to have children? Yes, we talked does, about that. Does the man you're dating want to be married and have children inside the next two years? That is a great question. I did not ask that question. Well, that's why you need to, because that's your clock. Right. If he wants to be married and children, then you need to get on with the get on. Right. Um, sounds to me as, you know, he, he already has children. How, what are the children's age? They're both six, two twin girls. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> well, has he expressed the desire to want to marry you? Yes, he has. So that's where, and I was watching your show yesterday where women start acting weird. I'm saying, well, I don't, I know I want him, but it's like, is he the one? Like, how do I know that he Well, we don't see, well, first off, I, I don't, I don't, at our age, I'll just be honest. I don't care about this love shit. I don't. Got you. Yeah, okay. What do you mean? Got the, you. The one is for uh, Neo and the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Um, Is he stable yeah yep he has he's doing his p i'm actually um i'm an attorney he's finishing oh, up his phd I oh know, lord no i, know, I'm I a PhD. know again so that's one of the things that i said i had to give up a lot of past aggressions you know past, uh -huh, um, thank you i know there's this well, certain well, that I laugh I did. because I, I laugh because um i don't, don't want to mention it just yet but uh this whole phd and nurse psych chick there are a lot no. of women out there who are, you kind of ladies fit in my area. I like professional women. If y'all can just give up a lot of this fuck shit, man. Right. Be fine. But let's get on to it. All right. Attorney, counselor, uh, what kind of law do you practice? <laughs> Employment law. All right. Well, if you were going to, look, you need to go, you need to make an agreement. Look, sir, um, I'm trying to be married and get these babies up in me inside the next 12 months. Hmm. So, here's my offer. With me, how tall are you? Five, four and a half. Dress size? <laughs> Six. With me, you get this. Mm -hmm. And if you go ahead and take me, I will, this is how I will perform as your wife, as, your, as the stepmother to your children, and as a mother to our children, you need to roll out a hell of benefits package and get to selling. Even though it's under close to a month, not even a month. So I don't give I a shit. Where's Dr. Forward. Lucia? Okay, I love I don't, that. Oh, shut up. Where's Dr. Lucia? Where's she? <laughs> I, I heard her too. What you got? She Who was powerful yesterday, yes. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's six months or less. Look, lady, you know how to run mm -hmm. a background check on a Negro. I sure do. <laughs> I you do. don't have two years to waste. Is he crazy? This is all you really need to ask. He's got two kids. Man, y'all like this. <clears throat> Wusa, Wusa. <laughs> I get it. You don't want to make a mistake and you don't want right. to smack like a Russian, but baby girl, you've been at this for a minute. You know how to pick and you know what a fuck nigga looks like. And if he has two children providing for them, Oh, let's just play this. Let's just run this down. Okay, if he's not it, then who? You got that right. Because like you said, the time is click. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna have, yeah. Musical chairs is going, you're going to have to pick. And the thing is, I wish it would become more like this, where it become much more of a decision. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I'm not trying to get in your personal business, but have you guys been intimate yet? 
Yes. Okay. That you should. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're not kids. You should. Does he pass the basic test? He's a really great guy. No, no, you know no, what? No, and I, mean, I know I, mean, I don't I mean, want to say the, he's like that too the, good to the, be the, true the kind of man. Okay, well let's but okay, and see and there and there comes the fear. Right? Yeah. There. There's the fear. Right. I, I don't deserve uh, to win like this. There's the fear. Get a therapist or be prepared to buy a dog. Um, no. He passed the basic <laughs> test in the bedroom. Just the basic test. Yes. Then does. what the fuck? You can have sex with him. His parts work, your parts work. He's employed, you're employed. And if you don't get the fuck out of here and, and send me a wedding <laughs> invitation, I mean, what are you talking about? He's too good. I will. He's yes. too good. Okay, then uh, then you stop and you run on down the county and go get Nug Nug them. And then go get you some some dysfunctional shit. Love comes later. Do you respect him? I do. I do. Does he respect you? Absolutely. His 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 kids are they twins? They're twins. Yeah, twin boys girls. or girls. Two girls. Okay, you'd be the mother of you'd be the stepmother of two twin girls. Are they well behaved? Yes. Right now, they're actually in boarding school in London. Bish, what? I know, I know. They're yeah, they're away in London for schooling. Yeah, okay, wait, wait. he's from London and he lives out uh, here. Uh, have you? Mm, and, and the ex-wife is where? Great question. Does he have custody? That's a great question. I know it's shared custody. Okay. Um, she's actually in London with the child with the children as well. Just process. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to do is process. And is he, uh, you in two different, two different locations? Yes, we you're, are. You're where, you're where? I'm actually in New York. Okay. I'm moving. I think I'm moving back here and he's in London. So you could be in Nylon, a New York Londoner. Okay. No, he's in California and I'm in New York. Yeah. But and the children in are in London. Yes. You're in New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who's going to move where? Great question. That's so that's the question. I'm actually going to see him this week and I really want to have that discussion with what him. What does he do for a living? He's actually um, a public health administrator for a hospital out in California. Okay, here's the hard question. Would mm-hmm. you want to work to pay significant bills after your pregnancy? No. Can he afford to take care of your attorney yes. ass? Yes. Yeah, he actually makes well way over than I make as an attorney. Uh, and you live in Manhattan? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a public health administrator, so he's, okay, good. he he worked under the mayor in you California. You live in Manhattan. Yes. Um. So you have Manhattan furniture. Yes. You got a car. <laughs> yes, I do. What kind of car? Do you own it? I own it. Yes, I, I own the car. Just a regular. It's a C three hundred C three hundred Mercedes Benz. Nothing. Yeah, nothing crazy. You don't call. If you don't call pods and have them come grab your shit and <laughs> move on to California and get off my phone, what are you work? What are you talking about? I mean, seriously. I, I mean, I'm not Miss Cleo, but I'm I, like, oh, actually... what else do what else do you want at 38 years old? No, you're right. I think it's just that that authentic conversation, not pushing too far and running him off or something. There's but no you're push right. Too it's just... far. I mean, you. Right. What the fuck? I, mean, I, mean, I know. We're yeah. so afraid that okay, you're afraid that it, it'll blow up and it won't work. But okay, granted, it's because we've seen more failure than success. But I don't look at that. How about you get happy for what could happen? Mm. Amen. I don't live my life like that. I'm not. I'm not worried about what could happen. If shit blow up. I'll go make some more. If I burn these cookies, I'll make some more. Goddamn it! I'm not worried about this shit. You don't either. Send me a goddamn invitation. Get off my phone with this stupid. I will, Kevin. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Seriously, though. I mean, that sounds like a winning deal to me. She's very cute. Bro, you got your wife, man. Y'all better. I want a good gift. Uh, I like fragrance. I wear a size 45 Italian loafer. From Tom Ford, I'm a size US 12. Um, unless it is the, um, Gianni boot, I'm an 11 and a half. I'm a 40 regular in suits. Um, I, I like Hermes jewelry. So, um, David Yerman. You can buy that too. Uh, These are the things that you guys can send me, um, as a thank you.
Because honestly, I'm, I was joking, but look. Love ain't got nothing to do with this. That does not mean you have a loveless marriage. It starts with respect and admiration. And you go through that awkward period. It's supposed to be awkward when you're 38 and he's whatever. Because we were taught we were supposed to go this and fall in love and butterflies. We're not kids. You, you get together and your parts and his parts match. And you're like, all right. He's got twin daughters. You better get on and start making them additional babies. I mean, seriously. Because the real thing is, if not him, then who? Especially for my ladies who were under 40. Again, the no danger zone is not an insult. Uh, sweetie, uh, you need to connect your audio. My ladies under 40. Between 36 and 40, you must really just decide. You're going to have to... You're going to have to take up. You're going to have to roll the dice. That's it. Got nothing else for you. You're going to have to roll the dice. You don't have time to keep kicking tires. You don't have time to keep wasting. And if you find somebody who's willing to. How about this? You crazy. I'm crazy. We all crazy. The only, only question is, does your crazy match my crazy? Or does your crazy make my crazy go nuts? Everything else we can fucking figure out later. I'm dead ass serious. Dead ass serious. Because everybody else can seem to get this shit done except us. So we got to just start, no, dead ass. Found a lot of tickets. Uh, uh, yeah, dead ass serious. Yeah, that seemed like they, you know. That's like, you can't write that shit any better. You got kids in London boarding school? Bruh. Uh, Shweetie K. I mean, hello. Oh, hey, how are you? Let me say something. Relationships like that tend to last better than romantic ones because they are rooted in, like I said, instead of fearing what could happen, start look forward to the possibility of life happening. Hold on, Shweetie. Uh -uh. You know, go ahead. What can I do for you? Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. I'm uh, 26 years old. I live in Houston, Texas. Um, I'm just currently trying to figure out what direction I'm trying to go in life. Um, I want to be married. I want to have children. Um and I'm kind of coming to the realization that I can't have it all. I can't have it all. Um, I currently work a full-time job. I have a part-time job and I'm taking on another job um, during the holidays just to get to the level that I'm trying to be. But I'm realizing if I want to be married and I want to be, uh, you know, attentive to my kids that like I cannot put my job on the forefront. Okay, so let me, let, hold, on, to... hold on, hold on, hold on. Are, do you have any children currently? No, oh, sir. No, sir. All right, so you don't have to call me, sir. We're good. 26, you want to be married. Okay. Did you go to college? Mm -hmm. No. All right, so you're working multiple jobs. Mm -hmm. um, are you trying to get to a financial? What are you trying to get to? Um, I eventually want to buy a home. Um, I, w I live in Houston, so I was in the Northwest, but I kind of felt isolated. Like I felt you like you want to buy a home. Yes, in 2022. Okay. Um, uh, let, yes, let, me, let me say something. Um, when I hear a young lady, 26 years old, working three jobs, I'm glad that I'd rather hear you working three jobs and because you're not lazy. Yes. And um, I, I've, heard you, I've heard you say that, like, you know. I don't um, like lazy women. Get to the yes, I'm not lazy at all. But I need you to hear what I'm about to say, though. Yes. At 26 years old, when I hear you try, talk about buying a home, 
the first one of the first things I hear is then that's something that you're taking away from you and your potential husband. Buying a home okay. should be new. I know, I know okay. there's going to be plenty of women that'll be like, no, girl, go out and buy a home and do your thing because ain't no man guaranteed. But this is the advice I'm getting from like my mom. Exactly. But to a man that shows, well, I'm like, okay, let's say, let's say I ran up and I met you, right? Yes. And, uh, and I wanted to date you. Uh, yes. You, you tell me you've got three jobs and all of a sudden you're a cute woman, but then you tell me you got a home. I'm like, well, shit, that ain't nothing special with that. She already got a home. Uh, that's He's basically going to feel like, why, what am I needed for them? Exactly. Now, is your mother married? Um, so I'm Eritrean. I'm East African. Um, so my... Oh, uh, yeah. The brothers would love you over here on YouTube. I'm not going to put your picture up, but they love you. Oh, you can. Too. It's fine. Um, no, I don't want you to get stalked. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so my mom, my mom was 20 years young. My dad was 20 years senior, my mom. Um, my dad um, was kind of forced and pushed to get, get married. Um, he was in the U.S. Um, before my mom, and then he went back home. And he, they were like, you're getting old. He was in his 40s. And so my mom um, was friends with his sister. And they well, were here's like, the Why thing. Don't you here's the thing. Yeah. Your mother's life is her life. Yes. And I've kind of, we've been codependent. I kind of broke that um, by moving. How many, how many siblings do you have? So with my mom, I'm her only because my parents got divorced when I was like three. Um, Are you on speakerphone? Are you on speakerphone? I have you on the phone, like on the Zoom app. I don't know how to do this. Okay, so here's what here's what I'm hearing. There's a thing called son husbands, but you're almost like a sister daughter. Yes. Oh my. It's annoying. Well, and. Yeah, it's called detaching with love. First, get your mom out your business. Yes, I and I'm I, I married a sister daughter, uh, and mm-hmm. it was the worst decision because, and her mother and my ex mother in law, I, mean, I, I I loved her, but it takes up space from a man. Your mother yeah. is filling up a space, a home you're filling up a space. Um, mm-hmm. Let's let's start here. Um, how long have you been in Houston? All my life, born and All right. raised. All right. But you I'm very trained. I have you want to be married. You, you want to be married. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, how many children would you like? Minimum two, three max. All right. Um, do you want to work after you're uh, pregnant, or after you? Do you want to have have to work, or do you want to have like after like my my time with my children with is up with the job the time that they allot me no i don't i don't want to be detached from them so soon so you want to be a housewife uh not necessarily but like at least for their first years i want to be well if you have three children if you have three children that's still about seven to ten years out of work yeah so i guess yeah so here's the thing and the reason i ask that is the, the the kind of man that earns the kind of money to provide the, the you know middle class lifestyle in Houston. You're talking about three hundred plus thousand dollars a year. Yes. Uh, do you do you attend a church, a mega church? Uh, no, uh, I do not. You, you better go. You need to. You need to get on. Uh, what is that church that Joe Osteen pastors? Uh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not going to church for. I mean, I'm a Christian, but you're not going for God. You're going for networking. Of course. Houston is too big for you. To find, you need to get plugged in to where the men that you kind of would want to, the kind of men that you want to be around, they need to be able to find you, and they're not going to find you in your in your in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, I would start saying get involved in a in a in a in a mega church to where the business community goes, to where the movers and mm-hmm. shakers go. Get involved in some sort of charity. Okay. Uh, Habitat for Humanity. Get involved with some not for profit like American Heart Association. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to you need to get out of the house, and even if you do want to buy a home, buy a buy a you know maybe something maybe you buy a rent house, but yeah, something that's what I was leaning towards. Um, I mean that's not necessarily it has to be it has to go that way. Um, 
just to you know have some financial freedom yeah like, but the know, financial that- freedom is something that is the backup plan your primary plan needs to be what you want i want you want to be married and a mother mm-hmm. that needs to be primary and I need to tell more black women, stop doing the backup plan, go primary. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm telling you, get into the mega church, not for profit. Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Mega church, not for profit, some sort of philanthropic stuff. You need to get uh, around Houston. You need to move around so people can say, oh, I, I met a lovely woman. She'd be a good match for you. A matchmaker would also not be bad ideas, sweetheart. You need to be, you you need to be top of mind for the Henrys, the high values, the PCS kind of guys, so they can know how to pick you. Yeah. So I've the financial invisible. freedom you're I've talking been. about is gonna come later down the line with your husband, anyway. And mm-hmm. I know there are plenty of women that are gonna be like, well, he can't always count, but I don't. Look, you're gonna have to gamble one way or another. And I would rather you gamble and get what you want than go down the path of working three jobs, buy a home, and all this other kind of stuff, and then look up and you a damn show. Danger zone. Of and course. And it's really fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to do that forever. Um, like, I do have a lot of personal growth as well that I'm like, you know, listening to your channel and my friend put me on. She's actually been on your show. Um, like, I don't really, like, have disagreements. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, he mad. Like, you know, sometimes I, mm-hmm. you know, that's the only time I'm like, ooh, Kevin, okay. But other, like, the actual knowledge and the messaging, like, I really don't have disagreements. Because have you I have you applied like, to be in my my Facebook group, The Mix? I did. I, I know it's a, it's a long wait. <laughs> okay, um, I'll check to see. Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, ladies, a lot of you ladies neglect to answer all the questions and then mm-hmm. but uh, i'll check is that your is that your name the name you have here is that the name on the facebook um instead of if, she... no, no 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 don't say it put it in the no chat. just okay. put it in the uh, chat room put it in the chat room i don't want it to go public so put uh, it, type it here but yeah you know in the last part um uh, you want to get around like-minded groups of women um, cause you want to have yeah. all these plates spinning. You, you, you're not a lazy woman. That's good, but you need to get, you need to matriculate in Houston. Houston is a, a great place to meet. Houston has a lot of, uh, energy money. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you move in the right spaces, Houston is one of the best cities to be in for a cost of living and finding access to what you're talking about. Okay. I just typed yeah. it over here in the chat room, type your, um, Facebook name there, and I will go. Uh, I will go let you in the group. Okay. Uh, I do have one more thing I want to say. Go ahead. I I don't know if you've done a show. Um, I know like within you know for us as Black women, we have a lot of health issues, and I don't think because I have lost a lot of weight um, since the pandemic has happened, but mm-hmm. I want to lose more because I just need to. Um, Personally, I feel like we don't have these breakthrough conversations. I know like, yeah, visually, yeah, I get it. Men, they, they are visual creatures and they, they're not going to come to us if we're size 10, 12, you know, 180 pounds, 200 Truly, pounds. I'm telling you, if you ask me to do a, a, a show on black women's weight. Um, no, no, no. It's not yeah. about the weight, the health aspect. I feel like we're not taking it seriously. Like we have fibroids, we have this. And I feel like okay, even a skinny woman who's black could have fibroids. And I feel like we're not taking it seriously because if you can't have, if you can't give your husband the children, that's a whole nother yeah. conversation. That well, let me, let me think about it. Let me, let, me think, let me think about how I can do it from a health standpoint, because um, that would not, that would be something I'll probably bring a panel of experts together and I would just facilitate the discussion. I would not try to hold it myself though, but I got to get on to the of next course. caller. Go ahead and type okay. the uh, type the Facebook thing in here. I appreciate it. Thanks, sis. Awesome. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, you know, I, I love a woman who ain't lazy. I don't like a lazy woman. I don't deal with lazy. You, you know, lazy is no good. Lazy is no good. Um, the women don't even care. Listen, doc. Uh, well, you know, thank you, Stacy. Um, 
You know, I don't I don't mention height, weight, dress size um, to be pejorative. Um, trying to help men get what they want, and men want women. They want women who are uh, friendly, you know. Compet- I mean, cooperative, feminine, cooperative, and submit. I mean, and, and single. Um, they also want them fit, feminine and friendly. It's a win-win. It is a win-win. So I didn't see you type that in there. So at the end of the day, though, ladies, what are you prepared to give the men that you say you want what they want? And let me let me try to give you guys some more advice. You know, I got another 15 or so minutes. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. We got time to hang out. Ladies, like the other caller who was still, who acknowledged she was still coming from fear and scarcity. Ladies, I need you to to start getting curious about men. You need to start getting curious about brothers. I mean, women, here's how Becky and them beat you. They're they're curious. They want to learn about things that their guys like they want to learn about you know his his hobbies his his all this other stuff you got to start getting curious because i don't know if it's your i think i don't think it's many of you guys intentions but many of you even some of the nicest of you have the i don't need you kind of energy that's why i was telling her you got three jobs and looking to buy a house. As a man, you're like, well, damn, what's it for me to do? And other groups of women make a make it known that no, no, come on, Papa, I need you. I, yes, not only do I need you, I want you, and I and I'm happy you're here. That's the energy. Yes, you need to get the pick me energy. I not only need you, I want you. I'm happy you're here. Please don't go. I like you here. Because you guys, you ladies know when you're up under your panda boo or your panda bay, the last time you had one, you felt good up under his arm. You were like, ooh, I like being right here. It feels good and safe. Why are you robbing yourself of this? Because Oprah and the daytime talk TV done told you they don't exist? I'm not down with this, you know, fear-based crap. No. But the men you say you want, you got to give them what they want. It's a non-starter. These guys are special kind of guys. To put yourself in the top 30, top 20, top 10% of men, that's special. You cannot continue to just act as though that they should get the same thing that you gave guys that, that it didn't work with. Right? And I think many women realize that it's like, well, dang, he's got a point. I am trying to give these guys things that I gave other guys and it didn't work with them. Um, and for some of you, it may be learning a whole new, a whole new skill set. You know, I don't want to say go to wife school. That ain't it, but there has to be something in between girlfriend school or something. Michelle. Michelle, my bell. Hello? You need to unmute yourself, Michelle. Um... Ask Michelle, you need to unmute yourself. And hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, what would you be willing to give up or what should you be willing to invest in the kind of guy you say you want? Um, I completely agree with everything you've been uh, talking about on today's uh, live and most of the things you talk about in general. Um, I was actually, I'm sorry. 
So that's nice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was actually calling because I was wondering um, which, okay, how does it go if you you are a virgin and you're supposed to, so you, because you said people aren't. Virgin? And I am younger. Huh? You're, uh, how to date as a virgin? Yes, I guess how should, like, it, how, because you said, obviously, earlier when the the live started, you were saying that um, no one is one, and, uh, like, I was just trying to figure out, like, how exactly would you go about it? Um, uh, how old are you? Sorry. I'm 21. You want to be a virgin till marriage? I'm not against it. Okay. Is this for religious reasons? No. <clears throat> okay. Um, is your dad in your life? He is. All right. How long ago did you take that picture? That was um, this week, maybe Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, you're pretty. Thank um, you. Well, if if it's for religious reasons, it's a little bit easier because that's when your father, the church, mm-hmm. and things like that come into it. Uh, but if it's not for religious reasons, if it's just for, you know, you want to make sure that it's special, um... Have you gotten close? Um, not no, no. Okay. When was the last time you had a boyfriend? Um, I was seeing somebody a few months ago, um, but I ended it. How long would you see him? How long were you guys dating? About two months. Okay. Well, I would say this that um I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away from telling me you're a virgin. Mm-hmm. Um, because more guys are like myself than they are not. Most men respect virginity. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be your first unless we're going to be there for a while. Right. Um, and you're saying you could go either way. Um, I would hold it as long as you can. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would hold it as long as you can, but uh, do you want to be married? I do. You want children? I do. Uh, what's the oldest man you could see yourself dating? Um, I guess it's open. I guess it's, you know, attraction is, you know, open. So I don't really have like a, I guess as long as I'm attracted to the person. Yeah, you're and like 30, to and 30, I have, you know, 30 to 35 is where you're looking. Mm-hmm. 30 to 35 for a 21 year old uh yeah they're yeah join my facebook group there'll be plenty of guys who try to marry your ass at 21 and a virgin uh <laughs> yeah for sure especially if that's a if that's an authentic picture yeah you got a lot it going, is. you got a lot going for you i would not yeah don't yeah i need to have a broadcast on this because i don't want to shortchange you um but do, do you does your father help you vet men um, I really don't, t- I mean, like he tells me like what type of men to not date. Um, but I don't like go to him like with every, you know, guy I'm talking to or anything cool. like that. Well, if there's somebody you would seriously consider dating, mm-hmm. I would involve dad. I really would. Okay. I, I mean, dad's not going to, yeah. Dads are great resources and they, mm-hmm. and they know all the tricks out here too. So. But That's true. At, um, but at 21, if you would like, it would be better to stay a virgin until a man wants to put a ring on it. Um, right. Um, and at 21, that really shouldn't take an extremely long period of time. <laughs> you're, you're almost in. You're almost in that prototypical pretty virgin. That it's almost like somebody ordered you up. So. Uh, I don't get out much. Well, good. Um, you know. You know, I need to think about this one now. Um, I'm going to make a response video to this. Join my join my Facebook group, The Mix. It's called The Mix? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. It, the Mix. Go to Facebook and just type in The Mix. Um, you should see a picture of me come up. Okay. All right. Talk at Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome.
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't play with vir- virgins, guys. Um, I'm very, very serious when it comes to to virgins and things like that. I don't, no, no, no. And if you're a guy out here messing with virgins in a not serious way, I hope you burn in hell. Tia, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tia Young, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, yes. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. What you got for me? Great. Um, so the question is like, what do we have to offer or invest? And um, well, the, qu- the question is this. If you find, okay, what should a woman be willing to like give up from her life? Or be willing to invest up front in a man, the kind of man that you ladies say you want, a guy that's special. And you know he's special. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. The wheels are spinning. <laughs> they are. I know. Um. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked y'all this, right? Like, oh, damn, I thought I... Uh-huh. It was a good one. I watch often and I'm like, oh, I, I can... I, I don't know. Um, that was very good. Very good topic. Um, I don't know. I know I would have to, you know, give up like the ideals and values that I've, you know, had that led me to be here um, and not having what I want. But mm-hmm. see, this question is I don't what... know the answer. I guess I want to know. Well, you uh, kind of... do you want to be married? I do. Um, how old are you? Mm-hmm. 38 okay all right see this question really it's a forerunner to are you ladies really prepared to win mm-hmm. uh, many women are prepared not to lose but what happens when you get dealt a winning hand what are you going to do for it and this question is really putting you ladies on your heels because for several reasons one You've lost more than you've won. Two, media and the world tells you that the chances of winning are pretty damn low, so you never really have to prepare for it. But then if you like the collar I had, two two or three collars black, when something drops in your lap, it's like, well, damn, you don't want to blow a winning hand, right? Right. So, uh, do you have any children? I have a son. How old is he? He's 12. All right. So... I was married for the okay. baby mom comment people. Uh, no, I wasn't. Don't need to go there. Um, the thing is, if you want to be married, you have a 12 year old. Um, there are situations out there for that too. But, like, for a man, um, I've been a stepfather. It's a horrible deal. Um, for, it was horrible for me. Um, and I mentioned, ladies, are you prepared to? do 50 50 joint custody to where a kid is half with his father, half with you guys Uh, allow the sons to go live with the father. So you can start all over with your husband. I mean, that's the kind of, that's the kind of levels we're talking about here, especially if the man has no children, because even the most well-behaved sons still know you're not the dad. And at 12 years old, discipline really is not a really that applicable you know, he's mm-hmm. a fifth. He's a fifth. Or, he's a sixth grader. Six. Yeah, he's a sixth grader. You don't be really disciplined in sixth graders like that. So, these are the kind of things that I need you ladies to start thinking about. Do you have sole primary custody? Oh no, we have joint custody. We actually do two weeks, and you know, on and off. Okay. So, so you got mm-hmm. that. So, um, those questions may come up. You, if a man said, "Hey," T, I, 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 I could see marrying you, I w- but I would want, you know, us to have to pay your ex child support and he go lives with his father and you and I start our life together. You cannot, you have to at least listen to that. Because in my personal opinion, I think boys are better off with their fathers, especially at this age. You can't really shepherd him into, fa- into, into uh, manhood, but it's good that you have joint. Um, but then some other things mm-hmm. I mentioned. I mentioned, you know, religion, uh, the com- religious conversion, social media. Um, are you very active on social media? I have it. 
Meaning, do you are you on Facebook and Instagram and? Oh yes. I mean, are you do you are you actively on it? Do you check Instagram three, four, five times a day and Facebook? Meaning, could meaning if you're yeah. meaning if a man asks you to give so, would you be willing to voluntarily give up social media? Oh, to give it up? Oh, sure. Okay. Because I'm not posting and you know okay. I'm looking at other stuff. Yeah. These are things that men say. Social media. Um, you do you have lots of are you tight with your female friends? Mm, no, okay. I mean we're friends, but right, it's like right. a, no, not not. Neat. Do you have any male friends? A couple that you keep in like regular contact with. Oh no, like if I have questions or you know I'm asking about a guy or okay. you know they're like in their fifties, like All big right. brother kind of stuff. All right, well then the last one is money. Money, 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 money. Have you ever been in a position where you actively, you know, bought things like significant things for your your man up front? Like not not a dinner, but, you know, three hundred dollar pair of shoes just because it's Tuesday. Have you ever done anything like that? No, I bought some cologne. Right. But, cologne. But, but now you will get cologne. But you'll want a, a a Michael Kors bag or a Kelly bag from Hermes, and see those things are different levels. It was Tom Ford. I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. What I'm saying is, is I just need you to start thinking about it. Um, right. Because, okay. Yeah. So let, let me let me just say this. All right, you bought a guy some Tom Ford, right? Cologne. Mm -hmm. And this was a boyfriend. Well, yeah, long term, yes. Yeah, okay. And and however it went, however it however it worked out, he's not there anymore, right? He's not your boyfriend anymore. So not. so let's say you and I were to start dating. And let's mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm special and talking about marriage and these kind of things. You buying me time for a cologne was the same thing you bought this last dude. It didn't work. I'm going to need Tom Ford's suit, baby girl, because I'm I'm upgrading you. I'm special. Don't give me the same stuff you gave everybody. I'm going to need more because it you're going to be talking about getting my last name, my ring. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand the thought process now? Yeah. <laughs> that's all I need you ladies to start comprehending that when you meet a man that you consider to be special, and you got to treat him special. Right. And it has to be much more deliberate. And I'm going to be honest, uh, we expect this without being told to women over 30. And it's really surprising to a lot of men that we're having to explain this to women over 30, especially professional women. It would be, it would be one thing to have to tell this to a, a 23 or a 25 year old. They don't know. But a woman is 30, 35, 40, it's like, well, wait a minute. You should be kicking these little girls ass in this area. Not in breaking your bank, but in just having the mindset of, hey, I'm going to do for my man because I'm investing in him because he's special. <laughs> you got mm -hmm. a son, right? I do. I'm sure you're raising him to be an incredible man. And I'm, I'm I'm quite sure you're going to tell him how he needs to treat a woman. Yeah, we we do that. Uh, I, and I guarantee you this. I guarantee you also going to want the woman that he's treating special to treat him as special as you think he is. I will. That, that's all I'm saying. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Got it? Got it. All Thank right. you. You're welcome. Have a good night, Mom. Bye-bye. You as well. Yeah, I think I think this is going kind of well. That a lot of women are kind of like, you know, relating it back to sons and brothers makes it make more sense. Because, ladies, what I'm not trying to say is, yeah, if you're gonna date a man, you need to go, you know, pimp yourself out and break yourself and, you know, buy him a bunch of stuff. But no, <laughs> but there needs to be something. And um, I would tell you the the late the those of the those of you those of you women who do figure this out, 
how to treat a man special, you will reap the you will reap the rewards because men can tell when we are being treated special. I told you I was confused. She treated me so nice, I didn't know what to do. I was like, what? But I knew it was something and I liked it. Now I'm used to being treated special by the women I deal with um, because I don't I don't promote somebody to a one to one relationship um, and do regular stuff. I mean, to be with me, shit is a good deal. And like I said, I always leave them better than I found them. Uh, but yeah, we talk about this next ex wife, and yes, it's pejorative. You know, I'm being funny. Next ex wife is good marketing, but the point is. Get, um, um, did somebody just come through? Ladies, get more curious about these men. Let's hit shit. Get more curious about these guys. Get more curious about your man. You should be proud to be with a special man. And a man wants you to speak of him treat him, act around him and around others as if you are proud to be his. Miss Underwood, what's going on? Good evening, Kevin. Well, it's actually morning. <laughs> I know, right? We're going late tonight. I'm just listening and I am... I don't want to say disturbed, but something, you know, listening to all the callers, something just hit me. Um, Because you asked, why aren't women knowing these things? You're expecting a woman of a certain age to know these things without you telling them. The unfortunate truth is that my generation and a generation that came after me, mm -hmm. we were not taught to focus on men. Mm hmm we weren't raised to focus on men. We weren't raised to be in a relationship where there was rec reciprocity between man and woman. So it's like a lot of women, um, that, that's, what, that's why they're not getting it. And then if you don't have good relationship history, if you haven't dated, you don't have a history of dating quality men, mm -hmm. you're find woman after woman struggling to figure out what it is that they can bring as an investment to a man. Because it's just as simple as just figuring out, if you got a guy who's the cream of the crop, it's everything that you wanted, even if it's only 80%. Hold on, hold on, Letitia, Letitia. To this woman in the chat room, E-B-U-N, why are you here? Um, if you have something you like to ask, I need you to go ahead and call in because I've, I've watched you just kind of while out in my comment section. You're not really here in good faith. And if you're not, if you're going to be here to just be uh, antagonistic, not trying to understand, I don't want you here. I'm trying to let people have a conversation and rock out. But when you start openly questioning me as if I don't know what the hell I'm talking about when there are thousands of people in here and, and dozens of women calling, it seems like you have the problem not understanding. Now, I did put something on the screen that Courtney said this is, Candace Henry said this topic is tough to comprehend, and, and Letitia's going down that path. But it's women like you, ma'am, E-B-U-N, that make it even harder to comprehend because you seem to have a really either hard head or hard heart. Whatever your problem is, I didn't, I didn't make it, and it's not my job to fix it. If you want to be in my space, and operate in good faith and have a conversation, more than welcome. If you're not, I'm going to ask you to kindly exit stage left because if you continue to go down this path, I am going to block you. Go ahead, Letitia. Oh, I am so sorry that you're having to deal with that. Um, but as I was saying, that at, at a certain age, for the women who don't know um, and who are not likely inclined to have a father or not wishing to ask their father, if you've got a man who is the cream of the crop, take the time to study him, to figure him out, and then move from there. 
it's it like you said it's nothing as simple even if it's finding out what his favorite meal is and just cooking it for mm-hmm. him, bring it for him um if he likes sports getting into sports um just at least trying to figure out the team you may not know everything about it but show some interest show some interest in him you know like you said treat him like he's special but unfortunately my generation and the late latter generation we were not taught you know you know what bothers me about this more than anything else is that women who are not taught they don't they're not getting the best out of men because when a woman fbi when a woman inspires a man he does things on a completely different level than he ever probably thought was possible see relationships are reciprocal so when you're giving the minimum you're getting the minimum you two people who are just content no one's living anything better than average so it, it's sad to say that, that that you weren't taught but it's even more to say damn y'all could have been doing so much better you could have been getting a different experience that's true you know lucia, lucia said it best i think it was the other day when she when she spoke about her parents um women need to just focus on stop focusing on what could possibly go wrong this and that him mm-hmm. using it just give him your best give him your best and watch he give you his best there we go and see that's that's the thing i was trying to tell the the, the woman uh earlier going into this thing with a good faith giving your best requires you not coming at this from a fear standpoint i mean as a man I know all the ro- the laws and everything else, but if you're going to interact with the opposite sex, it is a risk. And if you're going to take the risk, you might as well. <laughs> I mean, I don't don't take a risk and be tentative. I'm like, it's like going to get in the pool and you're gonna stay in the kiddie side. I'm like, shit, either go go swim, jump in the motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, seriously, or stay stay where it's dry. Why get your toes wet? I'm not I'm not understanding. And you said it best. Men are putting up risk as well. Mm -hmm. They don't know if you're a user, if you're truly not interested, and yet they're willing to step out on a limb and treat you special. You want to be wined and dined. You want to be taken out. You want to have this experience. Okay, you have to return that. Mm -hmm. You have to return that favor and figure out what it is because not all men are the same. Mm -hmm. out learn him betty white said it best i was learning my man earning, so you learn your man learning while you earn it the five love languages ladies you know and i think that would be better for you ladies to speak to because I, you know only so much can really come from men and men like myself but those things that are missing telling women that it's okay to learn the love languages learn your love language learn what makes you best and how to communicate that to him in a way that he can understand it to give you what you want. Men don't want to not give you what you want, ladies. I'm going to give you a hint. Men want to give you what you want, ladies, because we want what we want from you. We want what we want from you, and we want you to know it without us asking a lot of times. That's something a lot of guys don't say. Men really would love... Anyway, I don't go down that path. It's going to get too real. (laughs) It's going to get too real. But you know what I'm saying? And it's so and that's sad because so many everybody outside the black community seems to be able to enjoy each other, and we're just trying to figure out how not to kill each other. <laughs> My I, I think women just need to just just let go, just let go and have fun. I mean, mm-hmm. it is like it is going to be what it is, you know. So just you might as well enjoy it mm-hmm. while while you appreciate it. Appreciate it, sis. I'm gonna need to go ahead and give you a wrench too in the chat room now. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, can I get into the mix too? <laughs> let me go ahead. Let me let me go ahead and do that right now. Let me. I have said. I have, been on, the ro- I have been on the road for so long. Uh, your name and your, is it is it yeah. under, is it under your? Uh... It's under the name that I have up. Okay, I, are, I got. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. In the mix right now. Got it. Cool. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Yep. See, what we're basically asking people to do is, is like risk. And they're like, oh, I feel I feel vulnerable and I may it might not work. I know. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. 
But what's the alternative? What is the alternative? Because um, I don't know how to, I don't know what else to tell you, ladies. Because the, unfortunately for the men, men can you know have a second and a third life. You you ladies, it's time to get it done. And I don't want to see so many of you um, just out here. I don't see it under two hearts. I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm under member request. I don't see it. Submit it again. All right. So this is a good show. This is a good show. And I, I won't be surprised if I'm getting slaughtered by certain women on the channel because he out here trying to pimp women and trying to get women to pay dudes bills. Look, um, I don't even, <laughs> I was searching a video that I did the other day and I was literally shocked at how many people have made videos responding to me or with my name in it. Uh, and when I look through it, I'm like, they're men, they're women. And I'm like, my name all up. And I'm like, I don't know any of these people. Um, and, as, and you know, have at it. But I will say this. Anytime you ever hear something from somebody saying that I said something, you need to judge what I say the way I say it. Most people do not listen for context or they don't listen end to end. This broadcast can't be 15 minutes. It simply can't be. It's, you know, at best it could be 90 minutes, but it needs to be what it is. Um, and some people are going to hear bits and pieces. And if you hear a bit of it, that may kind of get you upset, trigger you or whatever. People tend to shut down. At the end of the day, I think we can do a hell of a lot better. If you're going to deal with the opposite sex, most people want to deal with people that look like them. And let me speak to black women. I'm getting, you got young black men saying they only want, they at 17 to 21 years old, they want to deal with other groups because of the treatment. The treatment and other groups are nice to them. I need you ladies to stop judging the men and start talking to the young ladies. Men don't typically, when you look at some of these guys, it, it almost like they always feel funny or bad for saying, man, I don't want to deal with them. They got too much attitude or this or that. You can't get mad at the men for that. Those men were raised in the households they were raised in. And you know, 80% of us are raised with our mothers. But why would a, a boy who was raised with his mother choose to say, I don't want to deal with a woman that looks like my mother. When are you ladies going to start addressing what's going on with you all individually and what you're offering men, what you're offering black men in your twenties, your thirties, and then your ladies in your thirties into your forties, you should be kicking these young girls, but because you know how it, you know what it looks like when it doesn't work. And you don't have, and you got less time in front than you do behind. It's time to get on to the shit that's working. Because honestly, I really hate to see a lot of people dying alone and buying dogs. But make no mistake, uh, guys are not going to take a bad deal, especially PCS guys, Henrys, uh, high value guys. The, the, the men who have made them made something out of themselves, they deserve what they get. So, uh, guys, that's it for New York. We're in overtime now. You know, overtime just means where we just sitting there here philosophizing and talking. I'll be headed back to Atlanta Sunday. I'll be back in Atlanta Sunday afternoon. Uh, the show will be there from Atlanta. Uh, then I'm going to get on the road and uh, go to L.A., go to Beverly Hills for a three, four days, maybe a week. But uh, I really enjoyed my time here in New York City. I miss New York City. 
I am seriously contemplating moving back to New York City. Um, yeah, I just love it here. Um, you know, I picked the worst week to come. It's been, you know, rainy weather and stuff, so I couldn't fly my drone or anything else like that. Uh, but as we continue to move this thing forward, you know, I want to bring more men and women into a space to start having conversations. You know, um, I I want to bring the the kind of men that can represent uh, well. Uh, I make no bones about it. If you know, I, I want I want men that are gonna make men look good. I don't want men who who are carbon copies of myself. I ain't shit. I'm just one dude. I'm not a god. I'm fallible as hell. I got a point of view and an opinion. Um, there are a lot of solid brothers out there, a lot of solid men out there. And if you are a solid man, a thorough man, please contact me. I would love to, for women to see more thorough, solid men that don't mind putting their work on their forehead and showing it. You can shut a whole lot of people up with your work. Um, I think it's rather impressive for when women can see men walking it like they talk it and whether they like each other, you know, romantically or not, just the respect is there. You know, we all we got at the end of the day, man. Um, and I would rather see people happy. I'd rather see people happy. And I, and I'm, and as an only child, I know growing up, when you don't have people around you, there's something missing. And we have got this digital culture, you know, this online thing, and we have lost the common touch. And that's that's fine. That means that just means there's something there new to d- discover and explore. That's the way I look at it. I'm looking at it as lost. I'm like, wow, now you get to discover the other side. If it's been one way up until now. Great. Guess what? Now you get to see how this is. But like, like Letitia said, we gotta get. We just gonna have to. Somebody's gonna have to let go. Which came first, the chicken or the egg, ladies? You're gonna have to learn how to let go. You're gonna have to learn how to let go. Because what you're doing is keeping you safe. But you're not happy. I remember with that lady on The View, uh, was it Lonnie Love, who used to always talk about how single she was. And that woman broke down because she finally got a chance to admit she got a man now and she's happy. You need us. And you need to start, and it would be good to start admitting to yourself, you need us, you want us, and that's a good thing. We're not your enemy. All right, folks. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been good times. We will have the lights back up as usual. But until the next time, peace. We are gone. Magnetic Blend 7. This stuff is so good. saying you need a man go on here in a minute salute Nisa tomorrow I should be having a photo shoot around town good times wrapping it up getting it out peace out
said, y'all need us. That's right. But ladies, we want you. It's reciprocal. Y'all need us. We want you. Nothing can stop me. Make those two things connect. Good night.